Good evening, welcome to this program by Sai University. Uh, today we have with us Vice Chancellor, founding Vice Chancellor of Sai University, Professor Jamshid Barucha, and Dr. Sinjadur Shankaran of the School of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Barucha will be speaking about psychology and its applications to various fields, followed by which Dr. Sinjadur will be talking about careers in psychology. So before we begin, a brief introduction to Dr. Barucha. Dr. Barucha is the founding vice chancellor of Sai University. He is also the president emeritus of Cooper Union, New York. Prior to this, his previous positions include provost and senior vice president of Tufts University, dean of the School of Arts and Science at Dartmouth, and fellow Center for Advanced Study in Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University. He has done extensive research in cognitive psychology and neuroscience, focusing on the cognitive and neural basis of the perception of music. Dr. Barucha is also a Pride of America honorary accorded by the Carnegie Corporation of New York. He completed his PhD in psychology at Harvard. He's also an alumnus of Yale, Vassar, and the Trinity College of London. So without further ado, Dr. Abhirucha, floor is yours. Thank you, Sanjeev. And welcome, everybody. Welcome to Sai University. I'm delighted today to talk about psychology at Sai University. We are in the century of the brain, which also means the century of psychology because the brain is the organ that makes us who we are as human beings. And it can be understood uh, in many ways. Of course, it can be understood biologically, but it can also be understood in terms of how people interact with each other. It can be understood in terms of uh, uh, how what we think about ourselves. And it can be understood in terms of how we interact with our environment and how we perceive our environment. So in fact, psychology and related fields to psychology uh, are relevant to every possible field or career and of course relevant to understanding yourself. I think in the last few years, for the first time in history, there is a recognition in almost every field that it comes down to people. Whether you're in the corporate world or you have your own startup, or you become a lawyer, or you become an academic person like myself and Professor Shankaran, who's on, on this panel with me. Anything you do in life professionally, you'll find when you are in the work situation, the biggest problems that occur in organizations are about people. But the biggest opportunities also come from people. Because organizations are organizations of people. Long ago, management was more about managing processes, managing productions, top-down management, increasingly management in all areas at all levels involves being able to get the best out of people, being able to bring out the best of yourself, being able to navigate the challenges that are presented when people come together uh, in an organization. Now, in your personal lives also, obviously, psychology plays a role. It can be a question of trying to better understand yourself. Self-understanding is a lifelong journey. And one of the things we do at Sai University is for all students 
whether you're in the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Computing and Data Science, or the School of Law, we want students to begin or continue if they've already begun that process. The process of a lifelong journey of better understanding themselves. We also uh, spend our entire lives trying to understand others in our personal lives, members of our family, members of our community. And finally, we need to better understand mental health, mental illness in all its forms, and well-being so we can try to live as positive and happy lives as is possible and help others to do that. In India in particular, I think this is a critical moment in time where your generation of students who are entering college has understood, understands that mental health should not be stigmatized, mental illness should not be stigmatized. It's still a culture where there's a lot of stigma, but we at Sai University seek to prepare your generation to be citizens and leaders and creators, change makers, or homemaker who have a better understanding of mental health and well being. Because every single human being, whether you feel that you're suffering from a mental illness or you have uh, a condition that is debilitating for you psychologically, every single human being has something to contribute to uh, their home life and their work life and Understanding psychology helps you to bring out the best. Now, the difference between learning psychology at a university like Sci versus popular psychology is important. We all engage in psychological Theorizing, we say, "Oh, that person's crazy," or "That person is is not so." You know, I don't like that person. That person's too emotional. That person is introverted. That person is my mother. Is this my father? Is that my sister? Is this my cousin? Is that my teacher? Is this? We talk about people, and we make judgments about people all the time, every day. But unfortunately, we do that on the basis of popularized ideas or traditional ideas about people. What you learn in a university, you take a course on psychology or any of the related subjects, including uh, neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience. What you learn is research-based psychology. There's now over a century of serious scientific research in psychology. And that enables us to give you a, a more sophisticated, a more nuanced, and a more accurate understanding of people than what you might pick up just from talking uh, casually to people or reading popular uh, news outlets. So I'm going to just talk for a few more minutes about how psychology pervades everything and about how research-based psychology at a university uh, is represented in different kinds of areas. Then I'm going to turn over 
to my colleague, Professor Sidhuja Shankaran, to talk about careers specifically in psychology. So let me just take a few more minutes to reiterate psychology, studying psychology, whether it's you major in college, whether you, be, uh, you have a minor in psychology, or whether you just take one course in psychology while you're uh, in college, can give you a better understanding and can improve your ability to succeed and be productive and happy in any profession that you follow, because all professions involve people. And of course, helps you understand yourself and others in your personal lives. At the university level, psychology is typically represented in different subfields. And at Sai University, we would offer courses in all of them. And they include social psychology. In fact, in the first semester, there'll be a course taught by Professor Shankaran on social psychology, how people interact and a related field personality, but also be something you'd be able to learn a little bit about research based understanding of personalities. Uh, there will also be a course on psychopathology, which is mental illness, a better understanding mental illness. Another sub area is developmental psychology, which is uh, about how we develop as individuals from the time we're born. And the first part of that would be called child psychology, very important to understand either as a parent or a caregiver or as an educator. Cognitive psychology is another sub area, which is my field. And it relates very closely to AI machine learning. So in fact, even students in BTEC, computing and data science, benefit from learning psychology. There are many, many connections because when we talk about developing artificial intelligence, most of the work in artificial intelligence is based on an understanding of how humans think and how humans solve problems. And the same is true of machine learning. In fact, the, the most powerful machine learning algorithms in computer science, deep learning, have their origins in psychology because they come from an understanding of how neural networks, networks of neurons in the brain are interconnected and how the connections change all the time. As I speak, the connections in your brain between individual neurons are changing and that enables you to remember parts of what I say. It might change slightly the way you think about things. Psychology relates to law very, very closely. And our BA LLB students would certainly find it to be an enormous help because the courtroom is a very intense interpersonal dynamic. It involves testimony by eyewitnesses in the trial. It involves decision-making by juries or judges. And all of the things you learn in psychology about stereotyping, about how people judge each other, how they evaluate information about people, about groups, how groups function, and think together about emotion in those situations, all of that comes into play. And finally, psychology 
is an ex highly interdisciplinary field. So at SAI, you can major in psychology, or you can do a minor in psychology. And uh, for the BA LLB students, psychology is one of the minor, minor. Or you can take a single course in psychology. You can take a course with Professor Chakran in social psychology, even if you are uh, a, a biology major or a, a literature major or a computer science major. It will help you professionally and personally because everything we do in our lives is essentially psychology. At this point, uh, I'd like to introduce my colleague on the faculty, Professor Sinduja Shankaran. She got her PhD in the UK and she has done postdoctoral research and has taught extensively in Europe and has returned to India, just as I have returned to India after decades in the United States, to help create this fabulous, unique ecosystem, Sai University, to bring out the best in our youth. So let me turn it over without first further ado to Professor Tenduja Shankaran. Thank you, Professor Barucha, for this uh, introduction uh, and a very inspiring uh, speech on why psychology is important. Uh, being in the field myself for over almost 18 years, uh, beginning at my undergraduate, uh, during my undergraduate times, I still un learn something every day and uh, sort of reiterates the whole idea that psychology indeed is an everyday subject. What I'm going to be speaking about today um, is how whatever you learn in psychology, how you can apply it uh, in various uh, careers that you have that you might want to choose. It's not necessarily only going to be careers strictly on, about psychology, which I will talk about, but also related careers where you can use your psychological knowledge and um, and and con continue working in that area. So I have a short presentation, so it's easier for you to uh, understand and see what um, I'm talking about. Okay, so let's share the screen. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can see my screen, right? So uh, so let's let's uh, go on with this. What can you do with a psychology degree? So that's a, a, a question that we will hope to answer in this presentation. So there are some general roles that you can um, take take in when you become or rather when you study psychology this would involve um, probably doing your master's degree or maybe a PhD or just a bachelor's degree is enough but these are typically the roles that is purely uh, based on psychology that you can do the first and foremost and the most popular one um, is that of a clinical psychologist so what for example the course that you uh, will be learning that is um psychopathology, you will be moving towards, steering towards becoming a clinical psychologist. For this, for sure, you need a master's degree and an MPhil degree. Essentially, you will be uh, dealing with uh, patients. You will also be working closely with a psychiatrist who can only, who can prescribe um, medicines, which and you cannot. But what you will be um, a specialist in different kinds of therapies. So you have cognitive behavior therapy, you have psychotherapy, you have gestalt therapy. There are very various kinds of therapies that you will learn about and therefore you will be able to address the patient's um, uh, si patient situation depending on what therapy might work best. So, this, so that's a role of a uh, clinical psychologist. 
Now, um, the second one is a counselor. So this is based on counseling psychology. It's not that different from a clinical psychologist, but the counselors uh, basically work on more everyday issues such as uh, family problems or relationship issues, problems with academia, problems with, uh, let's say, your sports, uh, whatever it is. So you sit with the person and you talk to that person and they just help you gain some kind of an insight in understanding what is going on and what can you do. So clinical psychologists probably will be dealing with uh, issues such as depression, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar disorder, and but the counselor will not be doing that. So that's the primary difference between the two of them. Um, you can get into a social work as well. Um, so uh, when you're working with a small population or a specific population, you need to know how to address people. You need to know how to engage in conversations with people. You need to be sensitive. So uh, and at the same time, you need to make sure what you're doing actually comes out properly. So social work is also a very, very important role. You can be a social activist as well. Uh, you, uh, as, especially for example, when you learn in social psychology, you will learn about collective action. So, what can you do to come together and, uh, for example, protest a particular cause? Uh, when you're working towards the uh, betterment of a minority community, uh, you could be a climate change activist as well. It's absolutely anything, but the knowledge of psychology would really help you in your activism. And at the last but not the least, which is very related to um, social being a social activist is humanitarian work as well. Um, there is something called creative movement therapist, and this is a relatively new. So this is where you have your art therapy, dance therapy, theater, drama therapy, and these are basically creative movements. So you can get a special, an extra degree in these particular subjects. And obviously uh, using creative movements such as art, and, and art, drama, and theater, you will be helping music as well. Uh, you will be helping the patient overcome and uh, certain uh, issues that they might probably have. So these are the general roles, for example, that you might be taking, uh, taking on as a psychologist, as someone who has studied psychology. Now let's look at some different settings where you can actually use your degree. So the, we have an educational setting. The most uh, common way, a common uh, role that you can take is that of an educational psychologist. An educational psychologist uh, hel helps in developing, um, the cur for example, the curriculum in helping um, students uh, in the way that they are. So for instance, you always, let's take the example of, of children with special needs. So there's all an online ongoing debate between whether they should be studying in special schools or they should be integrated with the other uh, children. So uh, typically an education psychologist with probably a social worker will come uh, come together and see the way that the two groups can basically integrate and and uh, study together so that would be the role of an educational psychologist predominantly in an educational setting um, school counselor so again this is uh, uh, similar to a counselor but the setting will mainly be that of a school um, you can also be a special needs uh, uh, educator. Again, you probably have to have another degree. So working with children with special needs, working with adults with special needs, uh, is it requires a lot of patience, a lot of empathy. You need to know exactly how someone is uh, behaving and how not to react, how to respond, and educating the parents as to how you're supposed to be with someone who has autism or ADHD or, or Down syndrome. So special needs education is also something that you can take on. Um, of course, you have the role of academia, who, where, where, which is what I uh, where I have got into, and Professor Barucha as well. Uh, you work at universities. You start with your PhD, then you climb the ladder, postdoc, lecturer, so on and so forth. Uh, typically, you teach at the university level over here, but you can also do research. So uh, you say, let's just say you're a scientist in that regard. Uh, you uh, have a research topic and then you try and figure out and engage in experimental work or not to try to understand certain problems, certain scientific problems um, and, and continue with it. So again, 
literally every field of psychology that you learn, you can do research in that field. So if you're interested in discovering new things, then researcher is something that uh, might, might be of interest to you. Um, the next setting we'll see is the basically policy making setting. So this is not necessarily you being taking the role of a psychologist. This is how you can use your psychology degree in these aspects. Now let's look at health organizations. So for example, WHO, we all know what's happening uh, all over the world that's COVID. So for example, um, let's say that some studies found, researchers have conducted some re uh, research finding that um, this is the best way to deal, uh, something is the best way to deal with uh, mental health and well-being. So what you can do is take a, take take that result and share it with the health organization so that they can implement that into their policy, which will in directly result in the way our mental health would uh, end up being. So um, a lot of policy making uh, making uh, situations can come by learning psychology. Similarly, if you are coming up with an intervention plan to reduce um, uh, or to counter smoking or alcoholism or to increase he uh, uh, healthy behavior or exercise behavior, again, you will be able to use the research that uh, researchers do and uh, implement in such settings and you would be able to see the effect of the two. So essentially what's happening is we are building a bridge between the research and, and practice over here and uh, th th that's one point that Professor Barucha mentioned that it's an integrated field uh, so we have to work with each other to actually get something out of it. Um, political strategies as well. So you can work in uh, political think tanks, for example. Um, again, based on research, let's just say that certain ideologies, certain uh, people are, are more favorable towards certain policies, and then that can be implemented by the government. But I mean, that's a bit of a nuanced topic, whether the government will actually do it or not. Uh, but this is how you share the information saying, hey, listen, most people here do not want this. Most people here want this. Most people here do not. Uh, for example, if you say, uh, what do you think about your attitude towards Trump building a huge wall between the border of US and Mexico? And if most people say they completely oppose it, you can take that study, you can take those results and then go to the Trump government. And if you're working within the government setting and say, listen, most people don't want it. Like I said, whether the government will listen to you or not is a totally different thing, but that's also one thing that you can do. You can get into the science of climate change a uh, lot of uh, why do people engage in environmentally friendly be behavior? How can they engage in environmentally friendly behavior? Why is it that people are skeptic towards uh, the issue of climate change? Why don't they believe that climate change actually exists? What can we do to make people take make people more um, uh, forth, forthcoming when it comes to understanding about climate change and doing something, something as simple as recycling? So uh, you can definitely be in, in climate change uh, research. This can be from the in the policy setting. It can be in the research setting. It can be absolutely anything. Uh, you can, uh, th these are very, uh, they, these are rather interconnected. You can help with laws related to immigration. You can relate it to uh, integration as well. If you have migrants coming, for, for example, to a different country, what you can do to integrate them into a society, or if they're coming from a different state in the Indian context, how you can in, uh, help them in the integration integration context. That's also something that you can do. Um, there's a bunch of other settings uh, that uh, you can also look into. So for example, advertising and consumer behavior. Um, so we all look at an advertisement and then we are tempted to either buy something or we are not. What's actually happening is that the advertisers are saying, okay, something like this would uh, tempt people to go to, to have at, uh, as some favorable attitudes towards this product. So let's do that. And basically what's happening is that is 
your psychological knowledge that's being put into advertising. Certain words might work better than the other words. Similarly, consumer behavior is what kind of decisions that you take that you engage in to buy something, what kind of decisions you engage in for, let's say, even something as simple as shopping. So uh, advertising and consumer behavior is one such set setting where you can really use psychology. We are in a generation of social media. You can work in any social media company, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, because this is this is psychology. With Twitter, for example, uh, if you're looking at hate speech, you can ta ta taper it down. When it comes to Facebook, if you have algorithms in Facebook, right? So actually, uh, what they said, the, what they found out was when you write course that is related to um, emotions of astonishment and interest or so on and so forth, pe the, the algorithm picks that up and it generates your post in other feeds. So you have such nuanced things. So uh, having a psychological knowledge in this area, it will also be extremely useful. For those of you who just want to write content, uh, what kind of content is going to be uh, eye-catching? What is going to uh, keep people's interest? Uh, what kind of content is uh, good and in terms of also morally good? What is humanizing versus dehumanizing content? How can we be less biased in our writing? How can we make sure we don't engage in stereotyping while writing? All of this can come uh, with the knowledge of uh, um, psychology, public relations is also something you work with people. So you know how to talk to people and so on and so forth. Sports is another area where what you can look into. So if you are uh, if you are an athlete yourself, or if you are, if you want to get into the sports field, why do some players perform better than the other? What are the different uh, the reasons why some people do not perform properly? So, for example, if you see uh, one day the Indian cricket team has performed really badly, you'll sit and analyze and see what went wrong. There's perhaps too much anxiety. Perhaps there's the, the, the kind of cognitions, the kind of emotions that they are experiencing. Again it's all in this uh, the psychology domain and finally this is something new you, you can do cultural training right now where we're in a multicultural society right and it's very important to understand different cultures and uh, so that you can engage with everyone so many people engage in cultural training practices uh, when I used to live in in Europe there were um, a cultural trainers wherein they try to integrate Europeans and let's say Indians or Spanish people or Italians and just to make sure that everyone understands each other and the whole process is smooth. I think that's the end of um, my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I guess um, we are free to answer. So, uh, Sanjeev, do you want to coordinate the questions? Sure. Um, so, thank you, Dr. Barucha, Dr. Sindhuja. Um, so, attendees, it's now open for questions. You could raise your hands and uh, we would ideally prefer if you could just unmute yourself and speak and if you're comfortable, you can turn on your video as well. Yeah, so there's a question. Tanya, please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question. Yeah, this is actually Tanya's uh, father. We are joined this session together. So thank you very much. It was a very inspiring and uh, enriching uh, you know, kind of session, uh, especially for people like us who would not be knowing much about psychology, but a lot of information has been coming. So I, I just wanted to understand uh, when you talked about the course in terms of major, minor, and uh, the last one was you could take a subject. So uh, how intense that would be? Because this is a very interesting area, and I do feel that it's going to add value to the you know to any any degree which anyone does. So could you could you give me more information at least on the uh, subject matter uh, other than the major and the minor? Yes, I'll take that. Thank you. So uh, we are a liberal university, which means that students have a lot of flexibility. So uh, you, uh, no matter which of the three schools you are enrolled in, 
you will have the opportunity to take electives, which means uh, each year you'll be able to take a certain number of courses that you can pick from the entire menu of courses in the entire <laughs> university uh, just to explore your interest. And uh, that means that no matter what your major subject is, uh, and even if you don't do a minor in psychology, you can take a course. So for example, uh, if there's a course on psychopathology, uh, which is essentially mental illness, you know, if you have somebody in your family who has an issue and you, you just want to understand a little bit more, you can just take that one course. Or if you are uh, interested in, say you're a biology major, uh, you can take a psychology course because biology and psychology are very closely related. Uh, sometimes it's called uh, cognitive neuroscience, social neuroscience. Uh, it could be um, physiological basis of psychology. You, if you are, as I mentioned earlier, if you're a law student, undergraduate, psychology is immensely helpful. You can take, for our law students, BA, LLB, psychology is required. So you'll have to take three courses anyway. Uh, even if you're a BTEC student, uh, you can take a psychology course out of personal interest. Or, uh, as I said earlier, uh, understanding artificial intelligence, understanding machine learning, all of that is psychologically based. Uh, if you have certain personal issues, uh, you want to help to understand yourself, it's always good to take a psychology course, that's put you on a footing to, to learn about research psychology and rather than just absorbing what you get in popular culture. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, developmental or child psychology, uh, everybody is interested in children. And uh, I have to say, there's a you know, I also give lectures separately on, on uh, how we misunderstand adolescence. All of the students on the call, I think you are all adolescents. There's a huge amount of research recently, just in the last decade or so, uh, on the adolescent brain, which suggests that we as teachers and parents uh, tend to misunderstand adolescents. And if we have a better way of understanding them, why they behave the way they do, uh, then everybody would be better off. So, uh, uh, Professor Shankaran, would you like to add to that? Um, I think you've pretty much covered uh, everything that needs to be mentioned. Uh, I think I have a couple of questions, so I will probably take those. Just one more question from my end uh, before I finish. I'll quickly take it. Sir, there was a mention about the book called Teen Brain. Uh, it was mentioned by our uh, chancellor during the interactions, which about a week back. So uh, would that would that be the right way, right book? I mean, Teen Brain is what I heard, but I wasn't sure about it. Well, there are quite a few books on the Teen Brain. Uh, the um, if you want to uh, email me, I can recommend a good research book, research based book, because as I said earlier, there are a lot of popular books, and I want to be sure you get the right research. Uh, you can always email me at bc at sciuniversity.edu.in. Um, what we have, one of the things I did with our first year batch uh, who completed their first year is I did a module for all of the students on the adolescent brain, which I think they found very interesting because they're all adolescents. And most of us in adolescents uh, at some time or another have some friction with our elders, <laughs> our seniors. And uh, uh, to help to understand uh, that, it helps, it, it depersonalizes it if you understand what's going on in the brain. So for example, one of the big discoveries that's been made is that the brain connections between the frontal lobe and the uh, amygdala, which is a center responsible for emotion and, and risk taking, does not get fully developed until you're at, at the end of your adolescence, which also explains why a lot of teenagers 
take and end up engaging in risky behavior, even if you've explained it to them. Okay, so uh, it has lessons for parenting and for teaching. We should shouldn't waste our time lecturing kids and saying if you do that, you know it's wrong, you know it's risky. Don't you, you know, uh, why are you so irresponsible? It, 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 it's, and they sit there, I can remember as a kid listening to these lectures, you know, I did something naughty. I'm not talking about something that's dangerous. I'm talking about just something naughty or something. I'm sitting to these lectures from the adults. Of course, I know the frontal lobe of my brain knows intellectually about responsibility, about that sort of thing. But the amygdala of the brain, which actually uh, gives me the feeling that uh, causes a decision about whether to do something or not is, is not fully connected. So these kinds of things uh, uh, can be very helpful. Why don't uh, we move? Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. So, so the, so I will read out the questions that have come in the chat box. The first question is, uh, which area in psychology has the widest a scope in terms of a career. So, and that's directed to Professor Sanford. Um, well, this is the classic answer that everyone hates for when psychologists give it's, it depends. Um, so if you want to be a practitioner, uh, obviously clinical psychology and counseling psychology is the, is the main uh, way forward. Uh, if you want to engage in academic research, literally any field would work. You go, uh, go to a university profile and then you will see social psychology department, cognitive psychology department, developmental psychology department. Some colleges even have climate change, psychology of climate change departments as well. So um, it's it's uh, for research, it's really quite vast. That would be at the postgraduate or PhD level. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's my short answer, Professor Barucha. Would you have? Do you have something to add to that? No, no. That that's that's right. I think uh, uh, it's right. Clinical psychology, counseling psychology, but any any field. That, for most of them, your prospects, of course, professionally, career-wise, are enhanced if you go on to do postgraduate or PhD work, and. Um, the, I can tell you that uh, almost all of the fields today, whether it's uh, organizational behavior as taught in business schools, or it's uh, marketing uh, as taught in business schools, uh, or it's um, uh, political science or law is deeply influenced by psychology. So you can, you can carry on in any one of those areas. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shankaran and oh, Professor Bircha. Next question is, which universities are best for research psychology, research related to psychology in India? Um, it's a pretty broad I, question. Yeah, I, I would have to give you a uh, I, I won't give you a vague answer, but then I just moved to India a few months ago. So my knowledge is rather limited. Um, but for example, uh, Delhi University, they I know some colleagues who have done some research there. Ashoka University in Delhi, uh, they have done some research there and hopefully Sai University uh, very soon. Um, there are some independent uh, research organizations, um, uh, research uh, labs that conduct research. Uh, I'm, I can't remember the name, but uh, there is one such thing. Um, so, oh, And also Nimhans in Bangalore, for example, if you're into clinical work, uh, that all, they also uh, engage in uh, research practices. Um, but you'd ha you'd have to uh, check each university department and see how it would be. But this is what I can think of um, top of my head. Let me add to that, which yes, is yes. that uh, at Sai University, you can engage in research even as an undergraduate student. It, traditionally, you have to wait until you are postgraduate or PhD to do research. But but uh, the new method really is that if you're really interested in something, you can, even when you're in an undergraduate program, you can approach a professor and say, I'm interested in, in seeing what research is like. 
and you can usually get credit. Part of your credit hours towards graduation can be for doing research with a professor. And occasionally a student might also end up with a, uh, as a co-author on a published a paper. And then if you apply for a PhD, if you really wanna be a researcher, you have to get a PhD. And uh, to apply to a top PhD program in India or abroad, if you have done some research with a professor as an undergraduate, that gives you a huge leg up in getting into the best PhD programs. So we are at Sai University going to be able to offer credit for, it's like taking a course, but if you're doing one-on-one -on -one work with a professor or with a team under the supervision of a professor and you learn about research by doing it. Thank you, Professor Barita. Next, uh, we have a question, which actually is a question I get a lot when I go out. What is the difference between a BA in psychology and BSc, and which is a better option? Um, I don't think one is better than the other. It's basically the content that you learn and uh, and and how you implement them. Uh, I know a lot of co colleagues in during um, during my masters it was masters in science mmc a lot of them did a ba degree in psychology but they still were able to join the masters i myself did a bsc degree um so there is no particular difference apart from what would be written on your certificate so it's not going to determine whether you would be getting a better job or or you would be uh, uh re re going to do your master's or phd it's just my opinion but per perhaps someone else wants to add to that. yeah let me add to that i know from polls that huge numbers of uh indian students want to go for postgraduate or phd abroad and i can tell you from experience that the PhD, the best PhD programs in the world uh, uh, in psychology don't care if you've had a BA or a BSc. What they care about is uh, assessing your potential uh, uh, as to do research. And, and um, uh, so that doesn't matter uh, overseas if you're looking uh, for postgraduate or PhD uh, overseas. Thank you, sir. Am I on mute? No. So we have one more question. This is from Varsha. She says, it was really interesting to hear about cognitive psychology. It was new to me. I'm waiting to hear more. The question is, is there any way robotics can be connected with psychology? Absolutely, Varsha. Absolutely. Uh, the attempt to make robots uh, as helpful to humans as possible involve psychology precisely. And in fact, in our, our first year students uh, were, uh, we got a, a lecture and interaction with a professor at Tufts University in Boston who was one of the top robotics researchers uh, who talked about how people are trying to make a robot uh, speak natural language or understand natural language. So you, to date, when we com communicate with computers, we have to use certain kind of syntax. Uh, it's very limited, but uh, there's a lot of research on how you might be able to get robots to actually understand just everyday language. Um, so there's a lot of hope that uh, people who have special needs for the elderly uh, who need assistance uh, might have personalized robots uh, uh, who can respond to their needs. Uh, a related issue that he talked about is uh, such robots, personalized robots, who can be helpful to people who need uh, that kind of help is understanding their emotion. One of the biggest challenges with computer uh, language understanding is understanding emotion. As human beings, we take that for granted. 
just the tone of voice or a slight movement of the muscle in the forehead. And as human beings, through millions of years of evolution, we can pick up whether the person is angry, is 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 uh, upset, is is happy, is sad, is uh, uh, potentially uh, uh, violent, uh, uh, is apathetic, uh, is hostile, and so on. So there's a lot of research going on on how you enable robots that are being designed to be personal uh, assistance, if you like, uh, to be responsive in such a case. Even in an industrial context, getting robots to follow instructions, take this part from here to that part of the factory and install it. There's a lot of research going on. It seems like it's trivial, but it's a big area and all of that involves cognitive psychology, social psychology. Um, and as I mentioned before, yes, robots are a form, the branch of robotics is a branch of artificial intelligence. And to get machines uh, to be intelligent, what 70, 80 years of research in artificial intelligence has yielded, in my view, is that the best algorithms, the best strategies for intelligent behavior have come from biological evolution uh, from hundreds of millions of years uh, and that are, that are included in brains. And so understanding how humans think, how humans react, how humans feel is proving to be the best way to try to create robots and machines that now, of course, there are a lot of ethical questions that come up and our students also are exposed to the ethics of, of uh, AI research so that if you do go into those areas, uh, you can do hopefully work that is helpful to people uh, rather than uh, hurtful and destructive to people. Thank you. Um, the next question. Which field in psychology offers the highest pay scale? <laughs> quite, quite direct. <laughs> um, in my opinion, it, again, it depends. Uh, if you're a junior scientist, um, obviously you can't compare the pay scale you would get as a postdoctoral researcher versus a tenured professor. So a tenured professor would get a higher salary. Um, so as a clinical psychologist, you will get paid less than a psychiatrist. Uh, so it's really hard to say uh, which one pays the most. But for example, it also depends on what you end up doing with your psychology degree. So if you're going and working for Facebook, you're going to get a lot of money. Um, if you're going to be working as a sports psychologist uh, for the Indian cricket team, for example, you're going to get a lot of money. It de really depends on what your career path is. But from a basic psychology uh, point of view, there are, I wouldn't say there's so much uh, of a difference in terms of what pays better. But again, this is just my opinion. Professor Bauta, any thoughts? No, I'll take the next question about maths and economics. Okay. So for a major in psychology, is maths or economics a better additional subject choice? Or rather, which which subject, math or economics, would be a good allied subject? Well, That's the question. Say, if you are inclined towards maths, then it's always helpful to take more math courses. You don't have to be a math major or you don't have to be a math minor. You can take selected math courses. So for example, if you want to understand uh, uh, cognitive psychology, particularly things like neural networks, machine learning, uh, it helps to, to have a little bit more math. Statistics and data science, come in handy, very handy. If you want to do uh, any kind of research psychology, either as an academic research or market research, if you're in business, 
the big corporations, the Amazons, and all do a lot of market research. And that nowadays involves data science. So uh, data science, of course, requires some mathematics. And we have a strong data science program. Uh, you can be enrolled in our uh, School of Computing and Data Science, but you can also be enrolled in the School of Arts and Sciences, major in psychology, and take data science courses from the School of Computing and Data Science. We have complete cross crossover in course registration. Uh, so for example, all fields today, all fields today have applications for which data science can be used. So if you have some mathematical uh, interest, uh, you don't have to be a math whiz. Uh, taking a course in data science can be immensely helpful, no matter what field you go to. Whether you end up in finance or you end up in marketing or you end up uh, in, in almost any role in corporate world, in a startup world, in, in an NGO, in a, in a leadership position or in a team member position, you're going to be confronted with data. That is a reality of our time. You'll be confronted with spreadsheets and the question, you know, what to do with this data. So yes, uh, I would say some data science can be immensely helpful to complement psychology. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, I don't want to turn off the students who, who aren't good at math or uh, or, or don't like it, there's plenty of opportunity in psychology uh, for those who are, are not math oriented. Uh, now on economics, what there's been a revolution in economics in the last few decades because it's been influenced by psychology. And uh, the, the uh, few years ago, there was Nobel Prize given in psychology to uh, Daniel Kahneman, who is a, I'm sorry, Nobel Prize given in economics <laughs> to Daniel Kahneman, who's a psychologist. And so behavioral economics has become a major direction within economics, because if you think about it, economics is about how individuals, corporations, nations uh, engage uh, in economic activity, in buying and selling, in trading, uh, in um, allocating resources. And so we we do that when we buy something or we sell something or in business, if we make a deal or, or we, we, we uh, market a product or if a country creates a budget or a policy uh, or they create a treaty with another country, all of that is about how people behave and interact. And so uh, psychology becomes very important if you if you want to take you want to major in psychology, you can take one economics course, you can take two economics courses, or you can minor in economics. That's a very good combination. Thank you, sir. Next question is: Can I do a BA in psychology and then still pursue industrial? No, it says it just says: Can I do a BA and still pursue industrial psychology later? Maybe that needs more clarity in the question. I could ask them to. I mean, uh, if you want to do a basic degree in psychology and then do a master's in organizational industrial psychology, yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Uh, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't, because you will be using uh, principles of cognitive and social psychology, for example, in the organizational and work setting. So, um, yeah, you will, you can definitely do that. On, on that uh, line of thinking, I'd like to add one possible career uh, that, that is emerging. It's certainly uh, in, in the West, it's already big, but it'll come up in India, which is in consulting. The big consulting firms uh, are approached by companies to help them with organizational problems uh, and uh, the uh, to help them set up a new unit. How should we organize this unit? How can we get more uh, uh, buy-in from our employees? So psychologists, I predict, will play more and more of a role 
in these business consulting firms. Thank you, sir. Next, uh, hi, I'm doing my BTech computer science as my major. Would it be better if I take economics as my minor or psychology as my minor? <laughs> okay. Who would oh, like that? Entirely based on your interests. Uh, I would suggest that you take uh, one, the first psychology course, you take the first economics course, take, you know, in your, uh, uh, as one of your electives in any semester, and whichever one you like, you go with that, or you may find you want uh, to do something else as a minor. But with your BTEC, you have four years, you have plenty of time, you don't have to rush into it. And the thing about Sai University is you don't have to decide now. You can decide in your second year, the major, and the, in fact, the minor, you can decide even in, in the third year or the fourth year, uh, if, if under the guidance of, of your professor. Okay, they will advise you year after year. And uh, the, the best strategy is take one course in each field, and then you will know very quickly. Thank you. Um, we're, so we're at the one hour mark. And if there are no further questions, we can wrap up the session. If there are any further questions, we are always willing to wait and stay longer. So please, uh, attendees, if you could raise your questions. We'll wait a minute to see. We'll wait a few seconds. I think there was one question asking about providing certificates for this webinar. I've answered that. Are you answered? Yeah. Right. We have a question. I'm a person who's very interested in research in physics. Going interdisciplinary at a UG level means I would not be able to give my entire energy to physics. What do you think about this? I think Professor Barucha would be. This should be your. Well, uh, if you are certain that you want to be a physicist and that's the only thing you want to be, then uh, by all means, you can focus on physics. Of course, to be a physicist, uh, you do need some other subjects. You need a lot of mathematics, and we certainly uh, can provide the mathematics um, at SAI. But I think in terms of physics, uh, our unique ability at SAI would be for a physics student, student who might be interested in other subjects as well. Now, you might be shocked to learn that there's also a relationship between physics and psychology. How so? Well, it turns out, actually, that uh, in research conferences today, if you go to conferences on uh, consciousness, trying to understand how the mind works, they are flooded with physicists. Physicists are very, very interested in the modeling of the brain, they're interested in, in um, modeling. Uh, the brain, after all, is a physical system. So if you're interested in the connections between physics and other fields, then I think Sai would be a good bet. If you, you know that you want to do physics and only physics, uh, then that might be uh, not the right choice right now. Right. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, I'm majoring in DTEC computer science and I'm looking into pursuing artificial intelligence as my future career path. Could you elaborate how psychology would help me as a minor? Great question, I think. Yeah, Mr. You're on mute, sir. Yeah, uh, I think I already uh, talked about that, but I'll just uh, summarize. Uh, if you look at the research in artificial intelligence from the very earliest days, which is in the 1940s uh, uh, up until the present, it's been very, very much influenced by cognitive psychology, very much. And in fact, at the top research uh, institutions in the world, uh, the, the lines between those fields are very blurry. You'll see research seminars where there are 
computer scientists, cognitive scientists, linguists, because if you want to try and get a computer to understand natural language, you need linguists um, and anthropologists and, and biologists and neuroscientists. So what you are, when you talk about artificial intelligence, it's really a subfield of what's called cognitive science, trying to understand the science of how intelligence systems work. Uh, there are many kinds of intelligence systems, but there are those involved in, in language, in perception, how you perceive your world, in how you solve problems and do planning, uh, in, um, in how you think about other people. In fact, even social psychology uh, is involves a huge amount of intelligence. So the next generation of AI is going to is already hugely influenced by psychology. I would say it would give you a huge leg up as an AI person if you have that uh, background. Right. Thank you, sir. So, any further questions? I think we've covered a, quite a wide variety of uh, queries here. I don't see any raised hands either. So, if there are no further questions, uh, sir, ma'am, shall we? Oh, we just got. Okay. So, I wish to become a cognitive neuroscientist. How would taking up a BA, BSc, cognitive neuroscience help me pursue my goal? Well, um, Sai University is the only university I know of in India where you can get BA or BSc in cognitive neuroscience. And uh, that, that is my field. But uh, we certainly uh, are building the, the interdisciplinary strength uh, in that field. And one of the uh, people we have brought in on our, as a visiting professor on our uh, international advisory board, if you look at our website, is the founder of the field of cognitive neuroscience, Michael Gazaniga, who's at the University of California. You might have heard of people talking about left brain and right brain. That all comes from Michael Gazaniga. He's a visiting professor at SCI. He teaches modules, he talks to the students. So, uh, uh, and in our model of education at SAI, the international faculty that we have, who are all the top people in their fields, uh, John Mitchell, the head of the computer science department at Stanford, Michael Gazaniga, one of the top cognitive neuroscientists and psychologists of, of, of our time, uh, as well as people in the humanities and uh, other social sciences. Our students from the very first day of their first year, get to interact with the world leaders in their fields. And then if you are thinking about going on, applying to some of those universities as postgraduate or, or PhD, you have direct contacts. I would say our number one unique proposition at Sai University, the number one unique thing about us, and our students are already telling us that, is that you get plugged into powerful international networks. Uh, so, for example, we've talked a little bit. Another area where psychology is very helpful is in media. If you want to go in media. Well, some of you from being kids may know uh, 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 about some of the about the, some of the kids' channels. One of the most successful kids' channels was started by Geraldine Laybourne, uh, who is on our international advisory board and she advises our students if you're interested. Uh, so Nickelodeon, for example, she started Nickelodeon. Uh, and so you get to know these people right away and whether it's psychology or it's, or it's some other field, getting plugged into powerful international networks of peers and leaders right from the very beginning uh, is our unique proposition. So I would leave it at that and say, uh, I see we have another. 
Will I have, will I, will I have an advantage while applying for further education abroad if I choose my minor as psychology and my major as B.Tech? And uh, do I believe universities consider this combination as an advantage? Well, uh, you know, I, I've spent uh, many, many years at Ivy League universities. I can tell you, uh, they are very interested in cross-disciplinary connections. Student who has done more than one discipline well uh, is uh, of great interest. This is new to India, but I can tell you at the Ivy League institutions, uh, they, they don't care as much about which degree you got. Did you get a BTEC or a BSc or a BA? You know, they look at your potential and your commitment, uh, what you have achieved and whatever you've done. And uh, uh, if you, if you want to go on, in technology uh, and you've done a minor in psychology, absolutely it gives you a leg up. Right, so so I think we have no more questions and we are 15 minutes past six. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. It was a really enlightening and, um, session. And uh, for the students who've attended, we are planning to have a lot more like this over the next few weeks. So please do join us for the next ones as well. And thank you for attending today. I hope you had a informative and enriching experience. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all.